I just took a big dip out of this spinach and artichoke dip. It's super simple, it's a classic. I made a few adjustments to turn up the flavor even more, and I think you're gonna see why it's worth every one of them. Let's make it. Spinach artichoke dip is one that you can't really mess up. It is what it is, but there are a few tips and tricks and steps along the way that I think can make a difference to make it even better. And this is a great dip because it's pretty much a dump and go, but I have one extra step in there, and it's great if you're gonna have people over for maybe New Year's Eve, maybe you have another party or gathering coming up. It's just a great thing to have because it's usually a crowd pleaser. Everyone knows it, everyone loves it, but yours now with this recipe is gonna be turned up with much more flavor and even better. So I have the normal components here and the main one being hay artichokes. We don't use them a lot, why is that? I don't know, I actually love them, but I like to think why not give them a little bit more flavor to begin with? Usually we dump them in, you don't even really know they're in there. That seems pointless to me. So I have a little bit of oil that's been heating on the stove in the skillet we're actually going to make the rest of the dip in. And I have it heating, and you know why I have it heating? I want to actually sear these little artichokes first. Give them some color, give them a little bit of flavor, which you can hear that right as I put them in, we're getting a little bit of a sizzle, and that's what I want. We're gonna let them brown up, crisp up a little bit to add some texture, some flavor, and it's really gonna make it better. While those are searing off a bit, getting a little bit of crispness on them, we're gonna start with our cream cheese. So, usual component here, but what I do wanna do is just soften it up a bit. So it's at room temperature, but I first just wanna make sure to smooth it out so I can stir in everything else. And when it is at room temperature, it really doesn't take long just to make sure it is soft. So you can see it just easily now mixes beautifully. That's all you want. Now we're gonna to put together and add to it some mayonnaise. Now I always use my homemade mayonnaise. You use whatever mayonnaise you like. I just, I find mayonnaise to make it home super easy. If I don't have it or if I need it for recipe, I can just whip it up, it takes no time. I like the flavor of it better, but use whatever you love. Then some sour cream or I usually use full fat Greek yogurt. That's what I always have on hand. You wanna do full fat because that acts different actually in recipes than partial fat or low fat. Sometimes low fat can curdle or get more watery, so I always use the full fat. So we just mix these together until they're well combined, which, see, super simple, and then we'll add all the other ingredients. So I mix those up until they were smooth, which you can see is just a nice creamy consistency. You can always use a whisk or something too if your items aren't quite room temperature. And I turn the heat off of these artichokes because they got, look at them, they got nice and crispy. That's exactly what I want. So now you're gonna notice the artichoke. It's gonna have texture, it's gonna have a little bit more flavor. That to me is essential when you're gonna eat something. Why not enjoy something as opposed to just stuff it in there, have it be mushy, not even know it's in there. I don't, I don't get that. So we're gonna start with spinach. This was a 10 ounce package, which is a pretty big package of frozen spinach. I thawed it, I squeezed it out. It goes down to so little amount. So we're gonna put that in here. Spinach is such a funny thing to have in here, but it really does offer a little bit of variety, a little bit of green, a little bit of freshness, which I think is important. We're gonna throw these artichokes right in here too. So we get all the crispiness, all those brown edges, and guess what? We're gonna put it all back in the skillet. So I'm gonna leave it dirty, because that's just gonna to add to the flavor too. So we'll have those in there. See how they add something to it? We're gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire. Um, I just think it ups the flavor again. This is all to me about how do you get the most out of what you're eating. That's how you do it. A little bit of black pepper. Yeah, I like black pepper and things. A little bit of salt. We have some salt in some of the components, some of the cheese, but you still wanna add some. We're gonna add some Parmesan in. Notice I'm keeping some here so I can put it on top. Now I just grated it thickly because I'm using, you can tell, a big grater. Same as I'm gonna do here with some Swiss cheese. Now I use Swiss cheese. You're gonna see a lot of recipes use Probably mozzarella. That's just not what I want. I like Swiss. It has a little bit more of a flavor to it that I think works really well in this. I like it. So I'm, that's what I use in mine when I make it. So we're gonna put that right in there. And then again, when we're thinking of freshness, when we're thinking of flavors that come forward that we actually taste and notice, it's gonna start with a little bit of lemon zest. So these are pretty, think of all the heavy flavors we're putting in here. Mayonnaise, sour cream, cream cheese, you know, all these have really heavy, thick, rich flavors. So I want things that cut through those flavors and come to the front of the tongue and just kind of bounce there. Well, one of them is gonna be citrus. So a little bit of citrus zest right in there. And then we're gonna cut it in half and do a little bit of juice. So that small amount of brightness of this juice added right in there is gonna wake everything up and really pronounce those flavors. So after we add the lemon, we can just now mix everything together. So yes, this is not something you're gonna have every day. Look at what we just added. 
there is no, there is nothing that you want to have every single day. But that's why when the times you're going to have these things, the times you're going to enjoy them is to celebrate and to really have them be full of flavor. So they're satiating and memorable. And that to me is what's important when we're having these things is to make sure they're as flavorful as can be. And that's what I always try to emphasize when I'm doing it. So it stirs together really quickly. Now we should just put it back into the skillet because at this point you want to bake it. That's the whole point here is we make it and then we bake it. So we're doing it all in that same skillet. So don't worry that it was dirty. That's fine. But now we want everything to get hot and bubbly and melting. And then that's what makes it pretty much irresistible, I will admit. So we're going to put it right out on here, spread it out to somewhat of an even layer. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can see, look at that. That to me is just beautiful. So if you are having people over for maybe New Year's Eve, maybe New Year's Day, maybe, you know, for a lot of football games that are on. I know, I do know that about football. There are a lot of games on New Year's Day. This would be a great thing to have, just to have it out there, wait for people to eat. A little bit more Parmesan cheese that I had shredded up. I'm just gonna put on top so we get a little bit of that browning, bubbling cheese. Believe me, that's important. We're going to sprinkle it right on there. And then we're going to put this right back into the oven. We're going to let it bake. Now, just in case, I always think it's a good idea to have a parchment line baking sheet. Depending on your vessel, this one should be fine. It shouldn't bubble over. But then you don't have to worry about it. Who wants to clean that up off the bottom of your oven? So let's pop this in and we'll eat it. This baked, and you can see what I like to do is let it get browned on top not only to give it that texture and that flavor, but also you want to make sure it's bubbling throughout because you want it to be almost molten hot. So everything is melting, the cream cheese and the cheeses together are melting and just at that perfect point. I also in the same time made some crostini, which is super simple. I just take baguette, olive oil, salt, pepper, and then I put them in the oven at the same degree for like, you know, eight to 10 minutes and just let them get a little crisp. That to me is the perfect accompaniment to eat with this. You could also do chips. You could do anything that you really want. I just think Cristini is such a great carrier form, has a great crisp crunch to it. Um, this is when though you dig in. So this is the best part of this. Look, look at that. Look at that umptiousness. Look at how beautiful that is. And it just smells amazing. This is like everything you ever want in a artichoke dip. Mm. Mmm. That's like a big bite. Mmm. That's good. What I really like is all the layers of flavor in that. And you're gonna be surprised to hear me say that. That lemon juice really makes them pop. And what I mean is they're really bright. You're not getting this heavy bogged down flavor. You're getting this delicious like multiple flavors on top of each other. You're getting the tanginess of the cheese. You're getting the sweetness of the other cheeses, the, the seasoning of the Parmesan cheese. The spinach actually comes out too. It actually does. It balances everything out. And then the artichokes. I get them. We crisped them up just a little bit, added some flavor. It's really delicious. It's classic. It's simple. Just turned up a little bit with more flavor. That's the important part. And that's what all these foods really are about, is creating the most flavor you can out of the delicious foods that we crave sometimes, especially for special occasions like a dip like this. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you have some friends over, because you might be sick if you do the whole thing on your own, but I hope you gather around with good people, have some good food, and enjoy it. Share these videos around so other people can see how easy this is. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And as always, check my website, wiseguy.com for this recipe and all my other recipes. They're all on there. Till next time, enjoy.